It's like coming up to my own private tree house. It's tucked away. No one knows I'm here. There's extraordinary space because of the slanted roof. So it gives me a big boned majesty to explore my mind in. I'm a quite intense person in the sense that I'm either intensely solitary or very, very happily with a lot of people making a lot of noise. So I'm at either end of the spectrum. I moved here originally in the early 80s, after actually completing a visual arts degree in Australia. Berlin was a place that I could just relate to very directly. It allowed me to be. It is part of me now. Scarlet. It's the colour of life, lifeblood, of rage, of fire, of things that wake me up. A red will not sit well if it hasn't got something to sit against. And so that has to be a cooler green or a blue or a turquoise to make the red actually ring. Texture is very important to me. Oil painting is about the material of the oil paint itself. It's not about trying to replicate something that perhaps a camera could do. I need to use paint like a sculptural medium. I mix into that all manner of other textures, including sand, hair, it's extremely personal. It has actually grown on someone at some point in time. It can have any type of shape. It can be curly or straight hair. It can be dark hair or auburn. And I like to incorporate something that makes you stop and maybe catch your breath. And you wonder at something that everybody knows and yet it's put into a new context. Fabrics x-rays, wire, whatever, will actually become part of the surface. These textures also have a symbolic meaning for me. They sort of connect me to, to the ground, if you like. A lot of my figures tend to float around, so maybe it's earthing the imagery. What I need it to express is something of basic human instinct. The stories ultimately are looking at the relationships and the instincts that being alive actually means. It's a huge thing and it's very hard to put into words. I think that's why I have to paint it. I've just sculpted a little bit on the side, so to speak. The figure, as I understand it and as I try and use the figure to express what I'm saying, to have 3D, to have sculptural forms of that set alongside the paintings, set alongside the music, it's all the same language, and it does help, I think, to get the whole group together. One makes sense of the other. So whose face is this? I don't know. Well, she was just born just now, I suppose, when I just polished her up. These people come. I'm always intrigued myself to find out who's just been born. Who was this person? Who will this person be? They come out of my imagination. I still exhibit in Australia and I exhibit in, in Denmark. I work around, but for me personally, there is an intensity in this city that I can't find anywhere else. And I don't want to find it anywhere else. When I was a young student here, it took me three years to work out why would I stay here. It was a hard city in those days. The wall was up, it was bleak, it was cold. For an Australian, it was too cold. I was a poor student, it was a struggle. And I wondered why I couldn't leave. Then I realised that there is an intensity about the place that has its advantages and its disadvantages. When it's awful, it's cruel. But that's the payoff, because when it's great, it's extraordinary. <laughs>